Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today I'm going to be doing what I call the Scribbling Challenge, in which I challenge myself to do a drawing composed entirely of scribbly lines. Now I've got a rough sheet of paper here just to sort of show you what I'm talking about. All the lines in this uh, drawing are going to be like this, just these sort of rough circular motions, scribbly, sort of random looking, although they are not truly random. Uh, as we will see. Uh, and I suppose the key difference as I go along is that sometimes I will push down harder and, uh, you know, make things darker as I'm doing right here. Uh, but otherwise, you're never going to see me doing lines like this. You're never going to see me doing lines like this. There's never going to be any of these sort of controlled, smooth-looking lines. It's all going to be scribbles. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, somewhat unusually, I'm not going to put down any initial guidelines because I want to, you know, stay true to this idea of the scribbling challenge. And so, uh, I'm just jumping right in here and um, to sort of explain what it is I'm going for, I'm going to be working toward the uh, sort of area above the fold of the eyelid and below the eyebrow. Um, kind of creating this shading that occurs because, um, you know, with the, the concave shape of the eye socket, you tend to get shading right here above uh, the eye. And as you can see, I'm just uh, I'm keeping things moving. I'm also holding my pencil way far back. I'm going to try for most of the video to keep my hands uh, far back on the pencil like this so as to almost force myself to be loose and random and not um, bringing any precision to any part of uh, the drawing until I begin to, you know, gradually build things up. You know, I was thinking about this before I undertook it, and uh, it's uh, it sort of seems like a stunt, I suppose. Here, I'm going to do a drawing that's, you know, composed of only scribbles. Um, but I think in a way there is a sort of artistic value to this uh, video. And it, it, it particular, uh, particularly in terms of people who struggle with making smooth lines, uh, I do hear from people who um, say, "Boy, my hands are always shaky, and I have trouble, um, you know, getting the lines to go exactly where I want them to. I want to make these smooth, flowing, perfect-looking lines, but they always end up sort of jagged and so forth." And in a way, I want to demonstrate that there's just lots of different ways of getting. Uh, pencil to go down onto the paper. I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that this is the solution for people who have trouble with uh, drawing smooth lines, but um, it hopefully conveys the idea that, you know, there's more than one way. Uh, if you are looking at drawings done by people that seem so impossibly smooth and perfect and you're like, oh, I can't do that, therefore I will never be able to create art. That's kind of the reason why I'm doing this video, to show you, look, there's so many different ways of creating art, there's so many different ways of putting a uh, pencil down on paper. Uh, don't feel that we all have to do these beautiful, perfect lines. I mean, to tell you the truth, especially when it comes to inking and so forth, I don't feel that my lines are as smooth as a lot of artists out there. I don't have uh, a natural talent for making super smooth lines. I, you know, over the years of practice, I've gotten better at making, uh, let's say, <laughs> serviceably uh, smooth-looking lines. And you know, basically, it's sort of hit or miss with me. Sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't. Um, but uh, the fact is, I think people do get sort of locked into the idea that uh, there's one method. And uh, if you can't, if you're not very good at that one method, then uh, you're disqualified as an artist or something like that. And, and I'm here to tell you that is certainly not the case. Um, in a lot of ways, this technique that I'm using today resembles uh, impressionism, uh, in the sense that you're you're gradually building something up. You're not attempting, uh, like I'm going to move down now to to what would be the um, underside the the area below the lower eyelid you can see I'm I'm not uh, trying to get any form of uh, perfection I'm just uh, building things up and one of the nice things about this type of approach is that you uh, delay the point at which you have to make decisions uh, about how dark to go where the line should be, all of that stuff, you arrive 
you know, you arrive at it very gradually over a long period of time. In fact, this video is inevitably going to have to involve um, time lapse because it is just uh, an incremental process. But hopefully, um, I can talk here and there about some of the choices I'm making and, um, as I've been doing right now, sort of talk about the larger implications of this whole video. I think um, one thing I'd like to sort of get people to consider is the possibility of of working in an incremental way like this. Not necessarily scribbling. Um, sometimes, and I may do a, a video like this, sometimes you see people do a drawing that's composed of dots. I think they call it stippling, you know, where you uh, make lots and lots of little dots and little by little it builds up uh, into your finished drawing. Now, it, it does require patience. There's no getting around that. Uh, this is, in a way, a uh, drawing technique that re arguably requires more patience than if I were to sit there and slowly or, you know, carefully draw, I mean, get the lines into place. I really have to think of this as a long-term project and uh, I'm going to get there little by little. I find it relaxing, though, and I hope that if anyone decides to uh, try to take this on as a as a challenge, that that they will also find that there there's something sort of therapeutic almost about a drawing technique that allows you to be so loose and seemingly random. You can kind of relax a little and say, "Hey, you know, I'll get there. <laughs> I'll get there eventually." Doesn't need to be perfect. Um, I suppose I am going to have to start to narrow down my decisions about the uh, uh, the pupil. Let's say let's start to work in just a little bit of line work here. Not the pupil. I guess the iris is what I meant to say there. I am going to begin to uh, start to just vaguely put in, and I'm going real light here. Now I do hear from people who. Um, who say they have trouble with their lines that they're that they're making uh, becoming too dark on the page? They um, they want to make light lines, but they end up the lines end up too dark. So a couple of things at work here. One thing one may be that your pencil is the lead of your pencil is too soft, uh, in which case it becomes almost impossible to make really light lines because every time the pencil touches the paper and yeah, I mean, it's the the lead is soft and it comes off onto the page it's, it's almost too easily. So you may that may be part of the problem. You need to um, find a pencil that the the lead is harder so that you don't have that uh, issue. Uh, the other thing is just um, the way you're holding the pencil could be part of it. Um, as I said earlier, I'm I'm holding so far back that it it would be very hard for me to make a dark line holding the pencil this far back. Of course, I have very little precision. Uh, holding the pencil this far back, and in, in, in a way I'm, I'm, I'm forcing myself to be imprecise by way of um, where I allow my fingers to touch the pencil. It's almost like um, tying <laughs> your hand behind your back <laughs> to limit yourself in a way. Uh, I know that if I moved my finger down here, I would be tempted to make more precise lines. So I'm not going to do that. I'm sort of forcing myself. And this whole uh, video is kind of, you know, inviting you guys to watch me step outside of my comfort zone. So there's a lot of different things, actually, uh, that, that could be learned from this video. It, it is good sometimes to force yourself to try a new method to draw in a way. You know, I, I am, I do tend to draw in a very tightly controlled way. I'm a big fan of detail uh, and that kind of stuff. And if you're drawing with this method, no way are you going to be able to uh, continue with all that detail stuff. I mean, I suppose I'm going to build towards a certain amount of detail, but I'm not going to be drawing individual eyelashes. Let's put it like that. Um, and I do think it is valuable to sort of push yourself out of your comfort zone sometimes. Well, I have been talking at length here, <laughs> some length, almost nine minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and kick it into time lapse as I begin to sort of refine things a little bit, and then I'll come back and uh, talk a little more, uh, frankly, after I <laughs> think of new things to say.
All right, so I thought I'd jump in here because I am starting to kind of tighten things up a little, and I think that um, uh, if I don't explain what I'm doing, people will say, well, wait a minute, how did you do that? <laughs> and uh, part of it is that I'm making smaller circles. You know, when I first started out, I was making quite these big... I'm, I'm sort of uh, going in with smaller circles to... Uh, get a, a little more precise. Of course, the whole point of this is not to become super precise, so I'm uh, I'm being careful not to. Well, uh, and part of it is the speed. You know, you can see that I'm never slowing down very much in terms of the speed with which these uh, scribbly lines are going down on the page. So I I think that that is something that I will hold to, true to all the way through this. I think as soon as you start slowing down, you are no longer you know, you're cheating, really, <laughs> in terms of, if, if I'm going to call this a scribble challenge, the lines have to be done at a certain speed, it seems to me, or else, uh, yeah, I'm just not holding true to what I set out to do at the at the beginning. So the speed is staying constant. I am sort of making smaller circles, though, so as to allow myself a little more precision. And uh, certainly, you know, this video is not meant to be... Uh, about how to draw an eye. I've done an awful lot of those. In fact, I'm kind of obsessed with eyes, frankly. I've got, I just can't seem to stop. Um, but um, to be sure, uh, making an image like this uh, requires having some prior knowledge of what the human eye looks like, and so the drawing is sort of based on that. Uh, but otherwise, I would say that this technique, this scribbly technique, could be applied to lots of uh, different drawings, I think um, it, it does inevitably become uh, impressionistic. And so, like I was saying, I'm not going to be drawing individual eyelashes. I think that would be really hard to do. Um, oh, you know, one thing I wanted to mention was this artist, Chuck Close, who uh, is a photorealist painter, one of the greats, maybe the, I would say, the most famous photorealistic painter of them all, maybe. Certainly right up there. Uh, but he had a terrible ailment. Um, forgive me, I, I'm not exactly sure what it was. I, I want to say it was like a brain aneurysm or something like that, that uh, caused him to, you know, very nearly no longer be able to paint. He didn't have the uh, precision with his hands the way he did before. But sure enough, he was so committed to his art that he... Um, continued painting and, in a way, uh, use, uses this kind of a technique uh, on these gigantic canvases. I mean, he always worked on gigantic canvases. Um, but because they are large, he's able to work with very scribbly, loose um, lines. You know, he's painting. He's using brushes and oil paint. And when you stand back, they sort of sharpen a little I mean, his approach is not to try to go for the pr precise photorealism that he was doing before. And a lot of people, I think, in the, crit the you know, art criticism community feel that his work after he suffered this you know, medical crisis is, um, from a certain point of view, even more interesting than what he was doing before. Um, but anyway, I, I did want to point out that you know, there, this this idea of the scribble challenge, it has a certain kind of gimmicky, hey, and, you know, here's Mark doing a stunt, you know. And I just want to uh, point out that, yeah, there is sort of a, a, a stunt kind of aspect to this, but there, there it also is um, a legitimate technique uh, that can be used. And certainly, if I were to suffer from the sort of uh, ailment that uh, Chuck Close has, I probably would end up doing the same thing. And I think the, the number one thing to point out is that nobody says you have to work on a small uh, scale. You can, uh, you know, as long as you can afford it, get a large piece of paper, and then you don't need to be so precise. It all, you know, when you stand back, it becomes precise. Uh, but each individual uh, thing that you're applying can be a little bit impl imprecise, almost messy. Um, and then again, it becomes sort of a triumph of patience, really. And Chuck Close always, well, you know, sort of the poster child for patience. His way of working required 
enormous patience. I don't know the facts, but I, I have to think that each one of his important paintings uh, was completed over a period of weeks, if not months. Certainly never finishing those in a, in a couple of days or anything like that. It just uh, it required that kind of patience. Anyway, I wanted to jump in here because I am indeed uh, starting to tighten things up a little and I wanted people, I didn't want there to be a mystery about how it was that I was doing that. But again, uh, in the interest of um, keeping this video to a reasonable length, I'm going to go ahead and kick it back into time lapse. Bring in scribbly old man time lapse. Oh, you're going to call me scribbly now, are you? And uh, he's going to help me uh, get uh, considerably further along. Uh, with this image, and then we'll be back, um, you know, eventually to put in darker lines with my trusty black prism color. Okay, so I'm probably going to do more shading uh, later on with the uh, Dixon Ticonderoga, sort of ordinary number two pencil, but uh, I want to switch right now to my trusty black Prismacolor, which is indeed just a black colored pencil, uh, so as to go a bit darker in some of these key areas, especially, uh, you know, anytime you're doing a drawing of the eye, if you want it to be realistic, the pupil uh, tends to be uh, jet black. So I'm going in, again, trying to keep to my um, sworn <laughs> vow of never doing a precise line, I am uh, continuing to do these uh, little circles. Now, you know, I suppose there's, there's a certain precision to this um, as I get into areas that uh, it matters really that uh, where the darkness goes. Still, you see me moving the pencil quite quickly, never resorting to one of these really slow, carefully placed lines. It is, um, and again, if this were even done at a larger uh, size, I could be even looser, um, counting on it to kind of snap together when people view it from a distance. Um, so this, although, you know, uh, uh, I'm doing this in a scribbly way, Mark Scribbly, uh, it, uh, it really does come down to the same principles that I'm talking about in a lot of my videos, that of contrast, um, and uh, whether you're doing it with scribbly lines or precise lines, um, going darker in the areas, um, you know, having a, a, a big range from dark to light uh, in your drawing is, um, helps a lot to, to make it look more three-dimensional. I mean, the drawing was already starting to look pretty good, hopefully. Um, but by going in darker in some of these areas, we're going to be able to really take it to a, a higher level in terms of <clears throat> giving it a sense of three-dimensionality. Now, uh, I thought it might be kind of fun uh, in sticking with my scribbly <laughs> approach to use the eraser also in a scribbly way to get rid of a few of these uh, l uh, stray lines, and especially in here, I feel like uh, that should have just stayed white. So I hope it's not considered cheating to scribble away a little bit with uh, the eraser just there. Uh, in any case, I think, uh, I suppose I'll just point out where I would see the darkest areas going in this drawing. Like I said, the pupil. Uh, I'm starting to head towards a, a suggestion of eyelashes, although, as I said, I'm not going to draw individual eyelashes. Uh, and at this stage, and especially when you figure out exactly where you want your darker areas to be, you can um, begin pressing down, you know, rather more forcefully. I'll, as an example, I'll use the pupil here, uh, kind of pressing down with all my might almost here, uh, because I know that that's where darkness is going to occur. And it's again, it's a principle that applies to all kinds of drawings, um, that you begin light and then gradually work your way dark. It's just there's a certain logic to it. You sort of figure out your drawing when you're working in light lines, and then you have the confidence to know where the darkest areas belong. Not the only way to work, just a way to work. Everyone, uh, in the end, finds their own way of doing things. But let's go ahead then, and I'm going to uh, go back into time lapse, going to continue adding uh, darkness with the black Prismacolor. You may see me switch back to my old pal, the uh, Dixon Ticonderoga. Um, but hopefully there'll be 
time for one last little real-time bit where I talk and, and say some final, you know, give some final tips about this uh, method that I've been using. Okay, so I figure I've got the dark areas about as dark as I uh, needed to get them, and sure enough, I do feel that it's necessary to switch back to the graphite and go in and uh, get some of these uh, shades of uh, gray between the two extremes. I find that happens a lot, actually, that I start real light, I work until I find a, um, you know, reach a point where I feel confident about where the darks go, then I go dark, and then I find that I may need to go back and sort of fill in the gaps between those two extremes. And um, I thought uh, maybe in closing almost I would um, sum up that, you know, one of the whole points of this video in a way is to show you that uh, drawing is much more about your, uh, your brain and your eye than it is uh, about your hands. Um, it's really about being able to see where things belong in the drawing, what needs changing, what doesn't. Uh, and all of that really does come down mainly to your brain, behind your eyes, <laughs> interpreting what your eyes are showing to it. So thank you, Mr. Brain, for helping me uh, through my journey as an artist. I do think that people tend to focus on the hands. Man, I wish I could have your hands. If only I had your hand. And um, to be sure, if you have uh, shaky hands and so forth, that is a challenge that uh, may need to be overcome. Uh, it's not um, as simple as saying uh, it has nothing to do with your hands. I think that's going too far. But I do think people maybe um, overemphasize emphasize the importance of uh, your ability to uh, coordinate your, you know, your hand-eye coordination, the idea of fine motor skills and so forth. Indeed, for certain styles of drawing, um, yeah, that is, uh, th those fine motor skills are uh, essential. But that's not the only style of drawing there is, and uh, as you can see here, you know, uh, I would say the, the most precise I needed to get was in the area of the eye here, and then the circles got quite small uh, indeed. Uh, but never did I allow myself to resort to, like, the real precise uh, drawing. That's not what this challenge was about. So, anyway, I hope that leaves you, some of you, inspired with the possibilities uh, of w what you could do, especially if you struggle with not being able to make really smooth, graceful lines. I'm not saying give up on that struggle. No, in indeed, if, if that's your goal, keep at it and be patient. It may take uh, a number of years for you to make your sort of jagged, awkward-looking lines get uh, smoother and more confident. But uh, if you would like to explore, as I have done today, these, these other methods that are more incremental, that involve uh, layering and gradually building something up, uh, that is certainly a possibility. And as I said, you know, just almost therapeutic. You just... Uh, you can kind of kick back a little and say, yeah, it's all right, you know, just... <laughs> Build it up, man. Don't turn on to anger, dude. Hey, it's the uh, surfer dude. I haven't had, <laughs> haven't brought him into one of these videos for a while. Yeah, man, what's the deal? How come you're not using my voice anymore? What's up with that? Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, kick it into time lapse one last time to sort of finish off this toning part, and then I'll be back with a few final words. All right, well, there's my scribbling challenge. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, let me know if you did, because I could certainly do more such videos like this that focus more on technique rather than teaching one particular thing, like, you know, how to draw the Millennium Falcon, uh, which I have done, and I'm happy to continue doing those kinds of videos. I think they have their place. But I think there's also room for a video like this that focuses more on techniques and general principles. But let me go ahead and thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books like Brody's Ghost and Miki Falls, my graphic novel series, a collected edition of Brody's Ghost on the way. I'll be saying more about that in 
future videos. The Realism Challenge, my uh, book about hyper-realistic drawing techniques, and of course Mastering Manga and Mastering Manga 2. I'm always super, super appreciative of anyone who helps me out by getting any of those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.